Yeah, welcome again. Uh, today we are going to delve into a topic in Form 3. And the topic in question is reproduction. Um, I want to believe that uh, you remember well that uh, reproduction is one of the major characteristics that uh, is exhibited in uh, living organisms. Remember the other characteristics, for example, gaseous exchange, respiration, irritability, growth and uh, development, movement, support and locomotion, and then uh, reproduction. So uh, reproduction is a very critical component for us to have other living organisms coming after others, especially after they have completed their lifespan. Remember, all living organisms have limited lifespan, and some of them have a very short lifespan, while others have very longer lifespan. And therefore, there is need for a, a living thing to have a way to replace uh, the organism in case uh, the former leaves. And this is when now we talk of the topic reproduction. So now if we may go quickly through the introduction, we must first define the term reproduction, uh, which simply means the process by which mature, underline the word mature, individuals or living organisms produce offsprings or organisms of the same kind or species. Remember, we said that organisms that belong to the same species are able or they have the capacity to reproduce because they can give forth an offspring of the same kind which is able or which is fertile. Now, in this case, we are saying that uh, there is that need to replace the organisms once uh, uh, their parents, uh, the parents die. And therefore, and therefore, we concentrate on looking at one of the process that occurs in a living cell. And this process is the one that we refer to as uh, reproduction. Now, why do we need this process? There are two main reasons as to why reproduction is a very critical uh, process in a living thing. Number one, it enables perpetuation of a species because you know well, as I said, as I was introducing, that each species has a limited lifespan. That means that you cannot live for long or on and on. There are times that uh, the organism's life, lifespans comes to an end and therefore it must be replaced. So the process of replacing the organism is uh, reproduction. Then number two, improvement of species, especially in terms of their quality, where there is mixing of different genetic material. And uh, when we shall discuss about the various types of uh, reproduction, we realize that during sexual reproduction, there is a random mixing of different genetic material in a process that is called crossing over during the cell division. And from that process, there is a variation that is created. And therefore, by reproduction, organisms are able to improve in terms of their qualities. For example, you may talk about improvement in terms of traits such as uh, higher disease resistance, higher yield if you talk about uh, plants, 
and so on. We shall delve into each of the two types of reproduction and we shall be looking at the advantages for each and we'll be able to see more of the other reasons as to why reproduction is really significant. But uh, critically, in general, we look at the two. That is, number one, perpetuation of species, and then number two, improvement of uh, the quality of the species, especially where there is uh, mixing of different genetic material. And remember, this one is during sexual reproduction. Now, there are two forms of reproduction. Uh, one, asexual, and two, sexual. And remember, these two are basically are categorized depending on the type of the organism in question. So in a sexual uh, reproduction, there is no fusion of gametes. Instead, part of an organism divides and develops into an individual free living organism. For example, in the case of amoeba, hydra, we can add bacterium, paramecium, all those other unicellular organisms. Most of them reproduce asexually. Now, for example, in amoeba, it, rep it reproduces by a mechanism or by a form of re asexual reproduction we refer to as binary fission. Binary fission. Hydra as well, they reproduce by binary fission. We also have other forms of asexual reproduction, including budding in yeast, budding in yeast, and then we have spore formation or sporulation in uh, bread mold, amongst others. We shall look at each of them individually later on. The second form of uh, reproduction is sexual. In this case, as the word goes, there are two separate sexes involved. There are two separate sexes involved. And each of what could be the role of the, each of the partner, uh, each of the two partners, that is the male and the female uh, partners. The male partner or the male parent produces the male gametes that we refer to as the sperm cells, whereas the female uh, partner or parent produces a female gamete that we refer to as the ovum. In plural, we say ova. Now, the sperm cell and the ova can fuse during the process of fertilization, leading to the formation of a primary cell we refer to as zygote. So, the primary cell as a result of union between the sperm cell and the ovum is referred to as the zygote. Now the zygote later on develops into the fetus for the case of humans, which human beings, which is embedded or implanted in the uterus that grows after nine months and then a baby is born and from there remember we have progressive development that leads to uh, an adult human being. So in human beings, we say the form or the type of reproduction is sexual because it involves the fusion of uh, the male and the female gametes. Now, uh, we, we will discuss on the two types of uh, reproduction later on uh, after looking at the process that occurs in a cell that leads to, that leads to uh, reproduction. And that process is what we refer to as cell division. So in our next lesson, we're going to discuss about cell division.